again and welcome to Match Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. And I'm Carla Garrick. And welcome back to <sighs> another edition. I can't believe tomorrow's February. I am so excited that, well, I hate when wind, I would rather just have a normal winter all the time. But I do love, knock on wood, that we haven't had a crazy amount of snow. And when we have had snow, it's melted. And then we don't have this huge, ugly mounds everywhere. That being said, Dan and I usually try desperately to go away in February because February is the worst month of the absolute year. Yes. Because by February, you're so done. Yes. But it's I, weird. I, I feel like this is probably the time to break the news to you that I will be away in Mexico for a week. Well, good for you. <laughs> no, I'm just saying in my house, this is the first year. Now we're going away in April, but this is the first year that I don't feel like Seriously, I'm going to kill somebody if it winter is over. You know, soon. honestly, I don't either, although I'm really grateful that I will be able to get away. Yeah. I mean, I'm leaving Lewitt home because uh, someone has to care somebody for the homestead. For yeah. And uh, and also, oh, it's my true. birthday week, and someone yeah. else is paying and, yeah. you know, all the good yeah. stuff. So I was like, you know, maybe I can accept the but, reward yeah. of taking a week off since I do four jobs for free. So I'm taking well, the, the generosity nice. that's being February given to me. First, um, Groundhog Day would be Friday, must be? Isn't that the I second? Guess. I don't even know. But. So, so the important things that are coming up for folks who are watching, especially on Facebook, we have Porcupine Day uh, that we were talking about earlier. That is on Saturday at the Milliard Museum. It's going to be really awesome. So if you haven't gotten your tickets, please do that. And then the other important thing I want to talk about is some right to know yeah, bills. Which because, I think we both the same stuff, which is awesome. So first of all, tomorrow, which is Thursday, February 2nd. First. First, because today is the 31st. I should know because I wrote a contract this morning uh it's going to be a big day up at the state is house. that when they're hearing this house bill 1002 yes okay. so so well it's just going to be a big day in general how do i know because i have enough fingers and enough pies that i've had like four different groups contact mm. volunteers to be like hey um can you hand out pamphlets for this, 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 and this? And I was like, whoa, what are we doing? <laughs> so I know there's um, secession bills, independence bills are being heard. There's some NHLA stuff that people care about because I'm going to hand out the gold standard uh, yeah, to I go didn't help volunteer. with that. I got too much going on this and, week. Well, I only volunteered it, because I'll be, be, there. be there for I the right it. to know I stuff. So the right to know stuff. Listen to this, folks. So, <laughs> cheeky, 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 cheeky. So basically, it's this bill that wants to start to charge anyone who files a right to know request money to fulfill the request if it's longer than a certain amount of time. Now, let's just break this down before we even look at the wording right. and all of that. Imagine, if you will, that your government or town hall or whatever is supposed to provide you with certain certain. Cer certain services. Those services are enshrined in the New Hampshire Constitution and by law. And then suddenly it goes, um, yeah, when you show up at, 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 you know, City Hall, when you're there at the counter, we're going to start to charge you to, it takes to, 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 fu to fulfill our duties. Now, objectively, whether it's right to know or like, I don't know, filing license. for Anything. the license or your dog license or whatever. That is absurd. That's a literal tax on, it's a tax well, on you. So, you know, I look So imagine at, you got to the front desk at, in, in Manchester. Right. And, and it's and, more and, than what you're what it's supposed to be. And but and, and they just go, oh, like, but for anything, be well, like, hey, on top of your licensing fee, so you have to pay I'm us. Looking, I looked at the legislation and I was like, okay, I tried. I always try to step back and I I always look at who the sponsors are and did anybody think this through and what is what caused this bill to come forward in the first place? So oh, right, we know. I know well, exactly I'm, what caused I'm gonna guess, it. And I'm just guessing because I haven't talked to any of these people, but basically the parts that it adds. Um, is when you're saying, like, for instance, says provide a written statement of time of the time reasonably necessary to determine whether the request shall be granted or denied and the reason for the delay. This is required when so when somebody asks on a right to know request for information. If they don't do it, um, they have to provide a written statement of the time reasonably necessary to determine whether the request shall be, you know, okay, that's fair. And now basically what we're adding is, and an estimate of the cost of making the record available if a charge would be incurred. And then down below it asks um, what the, the new the new stuff is. A reasonable charge may be made for the employee time to record 
to make the record available to the requester, including time to search, retrieve, duplicate, redact, and otherwise make rec the record available for the requester. However, our hourly cost shall not exceed $25 an hour, and no cost shall be charged for re requests under 10, 10 hours. Multiple requests from any person or entity to the same public body within a 30-day time period shall be considered one request. So what they're saying is if you, under the right to know law, request X information, I would like to see this. If it's going to take them more than 10 hours, they can charge you $25 an hour to give you that information. This is just like the minimum wage stuff. Right. It is backwards because <laughs> if you say to somebody, well, you know, if you do it and it takes nine hours, you can't charge anything for it. But if it's 10 hours, you can make $250 on it. Guess how long it's always going to take. <laughs> we call those incentives. We talk about them all the time right? on this show. And we that is why it is very important to align incentives right. with the correct behavior. Because this is the reverse I'm of that. The re this came about because... There probably could be, and I don't think they're, they're, they're necessarily the people, there are problematic people, not people with legitimate concerns or legitimate requests, who just file right to know stuff just to be difficult. Well, I don't think it's that. And first of all, who gets to decide, de decide no, who's gonna, problematic? Well, the city decided Lori Ortolano, who has won several right. pri uh, prizes for her work and who actually has won three Supreme Court right, right. cases, which means she was right from the start. They were wrong and they've paid... I mean, she's paid half a million dollars right, right. or whatever in legal fees. Right. So the city's probably paid double that. And they don't care because it's right. not their money. It's right. the citizens of Nashua who have to pay. But they decided she's a problem child. But I mean, if, if, this, if that was the problem that this was supposed to be fixing, right? The, to, the, the dilatory requests. Because I'm thinking not in right to know requests, but I'm thinking uh, there's been people who run for office and then continually try to sue the Republican Party because for various things. Like, they're dilatory. They're not actually trying to win a seat. They're just dilatory. So let's just say that that's the impetus. Would, the bill that should have been, should have been should be about being dilatory in your request, if you're going down and asking for completely absurd things, then the town should go to that um, ombudsman. And say, well, hey, so, Joe so, is Joe is abusing this system. Well, sure. So let's start with everything that's wrong with HB 1002. So 002, yeah. right? So um, imagine the chilling effect this will have on the media. Do you right. know who actually uses right to know requests? I know I talk about citizens who do it a lot, but the real people who do it is the press. Right. There are two. There is a op-ed from yep. Mark, uh, the Mark editorial ta oh, yeah. table and from Mark Hayward yep. in today's paper basically saying, hey, do you know that if I had to file right to no request for the following stories, this is Mark Hayward now, that did take more than 10 hours, and they're we important stories, right. right? Like there are stories, like he said, nurses, practitioners, and physician assistants prescribing opioids more than physicians, at least at the beginning of the opioid crisis so the opioid crisis getting information on that nuclear contaminated materials buried <laughs> beneath south willow street shopping center well yeah. i kind of feel like we should know about that one yeah. anyway that's the first time i've seen that uh the violent people who could buy guns so anyway my point is details of manchester police yeah. internal affairs investigations into two police officers accused of making racist comments you know so so the point is it's it's bad for the press it's bad for the people. It's great for municipal and it's great for the cities because they are going to one, be like, I'm incentivized to drag my feet and I'm going to make some extra bennies. This is a terrible bill. I'm going to be there. There's I'll no probably. Good, I don't see any reason. I mean, I don't see a good reason for this. I mean, if there is a problem that needs addressing, then address the problem specifically. Well, the problem, this is the going problem against everything. that needs addressing is that the cities and towns of New Hampshire have now decided anyone who wants to file open records requests is an enemy yeah, of them. Of the, of the that, municipality, which isn't uh, true. Uh, that, like, and, and the point is, so there are several ways we could actually fix these problems. First of all, constitutionally, they're actually required to give it to us. So, uh, you know, the Constitution says open, accessible, accountable government. 
Okay, great. Then we have this 91A, right? RSA 91A, which actually restricts our constitutional well, it, rights. It, it, right. it, I mean, it, it, it defines, defines it, but it restricts that, right? it because I don't know, you know, I know they wrote the constitution way back in the day, but I'm pretty sure they would have said, oh, one day people are going to be roaming the streets with cameras on their chests that can record everything that could just tell you what right, happened. Right. We should make that secret because that's what we mean by open, accessible and accountable government right. because that's literally the government's argument, right? So they don't want to give us the information. Now, according to the constitutional amendment that we introduced a couple of years ago, that 2B, the, the privacy the one, privacy, yeah. I think we could take a mash of Article 8, which is the uh, open government rights, and then I think it's 8, it might be uh -huh. 10, and then this <laughs> new one. And basically, I think what we should be trying to do as a state is to pivot to open government, yep. the technology exists, well, that's right? I, that's what I don't understand. So if, I'm going to play devil's advocate. I'm Joe Municipality. I'm a small town. I don't have a ton of staff. Um, I know that the law says that if, you know, Joe Citizen or reporter or entity wants, they can request X information, right? Then when I'm creating X information, I should make sure that it's reasonably easy to obtain from my perspective. You know, that's why, I mean, when I work on projects, I try to organize them in a way that other people can easily access, uh, you know, access the information. And then if I go back five years from now, I can go, oh, this is so e I can find it and it, I understand like, it. Like if someone could explain to me why, let's say in the city of Manchester, where I see in the Sunday paper, they were like, look at all these people making $300,000 yeah, plus. Yeah, that's why whole is that spreadsheet of every employee who works for this? This city should be right publicly the, every, accessible with a button uh, that you just this? go online and you can search how and about, I can go how right. much is Jay Ruiz making? If, if as candidates and as political action committees all of our expenses and donations have to be recorded on the campaign finance system at the Secretary of State's office. If we can do, if we can force somebody running for that hundred dollar a year state rep job to have to do, do this, jump through all why those. Why can't there just be an expenditure report? Literally every single thing, and and tax like. Literally, just so, just show us where the money went. And so, and, so what I hope we can do actually is to to encourage that, right? Because here's the thing, it shouldn't be antagonistic. Right. If the state is fulfilling its real role and it's doing what it's supposed to do and it's providing the service it claims it's providing. Then they then, should be easily then, able to document that. Right, and so it's, it's the incompetence or the ignorance. Like I do think there are a lot of people who just don't understand the law. They're scared they're gonna give someone the wrong information right. and stuff. I get that. So so you know, so now what they've started to do is practice is they just automatically kick it to an attorney. So Which now is, you're talking about every right to know request now from we need the gate cost three hundred dollars. Right. I noticed that when they were talking about the school board, um, the aldermen want the um, the superintendent to come before the board of mayor and alderman to talk about this two two hundred ninety million dollar school building project, right? <laughs> and the school board's reaction was literally, "I don't know if the superintendent's the right person. I think we should send this school board's attorney." And I thought, "Wait, the school board's attorney is going to go talk to the alderman? No. Why so, does why would we need an attorney from one department to fill in for?" Uh, so maybe we can like uh, parse out what the fears are, right? right? Like what are people scared of? Now, some people will say, well, it's a litigious society and, you know, I'm worried I'm going to get sued. For and I'm what? like, but you're getting sued for not giving the information. You're not actually getting sued for giving the information. Right. So someone needs to bring me the arguments of, oh, we disclosed this and then we got sued but by the if, disclosure, right? It should be so private that it can't be disclosed. Well, so here's the thing, uh, right? Medical records. No, sure. Which actually HIPAA is not what people think it is either, but we'll we'll just go with medical information. But also, uh, so then the question becomes, okay, why is the government collecting medical information Well, they're not. People? I'm just saying so, you can't, right. You if know. it was a, 
I'm going to say maybe if it was a publicly funded health clinic. Right. It's sort of like vaccine records or right. whatever, right? But so so people can be, um, so they can be like, oh, we're scared we're going to get sued. So it's like, okay, maybe we can address that concern. With this bill in particular, it didn't even, I don't think they consulted this this uh, right to know ombudsman. So, no, probably so now it's like, but wait, we try to address those problems by creating this office, which I think is just going to create other problems. It's the nature of working with government. But, you know, we're trying to solve some problems but so so it's it's fear and then it's like but if you're collecting information you shouldn't be collecting under 2b right the privacy so so they're scared they're going to get sued for disclosing something they the shouldn't have it disclosed mind. but per 2b you shouldn't be collecting information right. that you're scared if you disclose you'll get disclosed, right. right? Get into trouble. So there's sort of something we have to close right. the loop on. Right, and the on. solution isn't to charge the citizens. No. That's and, what this bill is like. Well, I know, we can make it so that we, I don't know, no. No, and so. Um, Look at no. <laughs> so, you know, I think that people, I'm hoping it's going to go down in flames. I'm not sure what the, the temperament is. In the what, I mean, I'm going to assume that. It is that, a House bill, so it'll come before the House first. Who, who, who was the sponsor? Well, and I don't know whether these people are all Republicans or Democrats. We've got Representative Kutab, K-U-T-T-A-B, from Rockingham County, Michael Cahill from Rockingham County, Ball from Rockingham County. This seems to be a theme here. <laughs> um, Ma Maggie Orr from Rockingham County. A is Ank Rockingham Nashua? Rockingham is like the seek is um, Derry, like Salem, Auburn, uh, Exeter, okay. Salem. Yes, yeah, Salem. Um, Ankerberg from Strafford, DeSimone from Rockingham, Dunn from Rockingham, Nelson from Rockingham, Boyd from Hillsboro, Edwards from Rockingham, Grassy from Strafford, Carson, Senator Carson, Senator Gannon, Senator Waters, Carson Senator Lang, and really, Senator Avard. Well, I really just bad on privacy. I don't know why Avard's on there, but well, you know, maybe right, I can give I don't it know. No so there's, it'll be interesting to see how this comes out of committee because, um, it, I, they, right now, the makeup of the House does give the Republicans a five-seat advantage right now. Woo! It's, five it's, seats. It's a squeaker. So it, it'll be interesting. It won't come up on the floor for a bit. No. Weeks at least. So, uh, so that is something we should all keep yes. our eye on. If you are interested, I'll probably post later today either on my website, carlagarrick.com, or on my Facebook. I'll have some language and some stuff about the bill, which committee, if you want to sign in online and all that good stuff. The other one, this is not oh. a bill, but no. I did want to mention yes. this because I thought it was cool because we talked about yes. it so much, was the West... Remember the West Side lockdown back in 2016? Yes. Yes. This, for folks who don't know, was there was an incident with like sort of a, a I believe he's actually legally crazy, so I can say a crazy homeless dude who uh, had a firearm. There was, uh, the police were searching for a robber, decided it was this guy. He got a fright. He shot at some cops. Uh, two police officers were injured. Oh, yes. I believe one of them, you know, Ian I was McPherson. like, I almost feel like the, uh, again, I, back then even, and you could go check my blog on this, I felt like one of the shooters was a uh, officer officer uh, officer to officer but okay I can't prove that so anyway so this whole thing happened and then the police in all their wisdom this was around the time I was arguing with them about whether the scanner should be decrypted or uh, encrypted or not I was saying they shouldn't of course they did it anyway open accessible and accountable to the people so um so they locked us down for like something like eight hours yeah. and but they had caught the guy before they did the lockdown right this was sort of pre-covid when we were like oh lockdowns that's still a big deal the government can't really do that apparently they can so anyway so i gotta be in my bonnet because i was like this is annoying and you know fuss 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 so anyway somewhere in that whole scenario the police the police officer sued so the two cops who got shot sued the gun store and the department of the state department Departments. of safety so basically the 
the the entity that's responsible for doing background checks. I saw that, and they they lost. The Supreme Court said mm, no. A lower court. But but but, but can we just like stand still there for a second? So two police officers in the course of their duty, right? Like Unfor- you're a cop. Unfortunately, got shot. And 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 yeah, that's terrible. That's tragic. Whose no one wants people that? to be sh- shot. But for the cops to then start to go and to sue gun shops. Because yeah. they got shot by a crazy homeless yeah. guy's gun. It's like that well, then, chain of I events did, is I nonsense. I read that because I was like, okay, wait, what happened? So in the way it works in the state of New Hampshire, I believe, <laughs> I don't know because I'm not crazy, so I don't have to deal with these things, <laughs> is when you go to buy a firearm, you fill out a, a federal fire line, the, the federal thing, and it goes to this thing called um, the gun line. That is how it gets researched. So the, the owner of the firearm... The store, firearm store, has to submit this information to this gun line. Which is a federal program. Right, it's a federal program. And they run to see know why if the person, <laughs> because it's just, I'm doing it too, I don't know. So, um, to see if the person who wants to buy a gun has reasons that they can't buy a gun. You know, they could they could be a convicted felon and they might not have the right to own a gun. They could have, a, you know, a, a rap sheet with domestic violence charges. You know, there's all sorts of things. They could be... They could have been found by a, a, a hospital or a doctor to be mentally incompetent. There are reasons. Now, if, if they're not sure, what happens is it gets bounced back, and there's a three-day period of time that after three days, if the, if the state and the government, if the gun line, if whoever's responsible, doesn't come back with a reason to say no, then the gun can be sold. So there is a waiting period. There's this three-day waiting period. In this particular case, there was nothing that came back. So the guy came back to the gun store and they said, okay, three well, days fine, you made the way, wait the three days. You're, you, know, you give me money, I give you the gun. Everybody goes bye-bye now and then we're done. So... If they're, I mean, to sue the Department of Safety, I guess, is one thing. If they failed to be able, there really, I don't think, was anything that they could use with the information that they have access to. I mean, I guess he to. did have a rap sheet, but that they it were wasn't, mostly, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't things, domestic no. violence. It wasn't any of the things that would flag no. it. So if you want to be upset with somebody, be upset with the, all the employees up at the Department of Safety that are tasked with doing this job that maybe didn't do it. But to say to the gun owner, the gun store owner, that somehow he's responsible when he 100% followed... Um, the protocol rules. the rule yeah speaking of which if you were if you're a conspiratorial person or, <laughs> yeah no or i am. really think like sometimes i gotta just say i think the government like sometimes the people who we're turning to for help are our own worst enemies you have to watch and i believe it's on netflix a thing called american nightmare Did yes you yes three part three series episodes. yep the woman who got kidnapped, she, right? Well, yep. It, it, it's about a woman in California who was kidnapped. It's one, three episodes. It's not really long. But uh, you get to the end of it and you're like, mm, mm. I mean, honestly, I should write a review about that because I was like, oh, here's a really good. Don't give it away. Uh, <laughs> I'm well, just saying, well, don't give away the answer because I wasn't sure how it was going to end. But there are uh, times when we should question whether the government entities are looking out for our best interest Oh, I think you should question of... it all the time. We're back to incentives. Like, yeah. who, do, who, who, who do they really work for? Who's yeah. paying them, yeah. right? They don't it... seem to think it's us. So. Um, I would like to, um, maybe next week, I wouldn't mind talking about the salaries. I did notice, because I, I take it upon myself, because they never put the two lists in the same format. Have I you know. So Tammy takes so her time, you and, and you it. have to copy them and paste them and copy them. It takes like 20 minutes. And I did that, and then I put them all in one, and then I sorted. And I'm looking at the top list, and I'm like, where's the chief of police? Yeah, he doesn't appear on either list. Oh. Which I'm, I'm just curious, like, so... Wait, if one person's not there, who else isn't there? Oh, I'm sure we actually that I will help you with that because right? that would be a good good story to. Well, I just um, don't like again back to data. You exported all this data. How is it that the chief of police isn't listed? In no, there? and then the other thing, just back to that right to know stuff. So one of the sneaky sneaky things they started to do too is if you so so when you file a right to know request, you have to do it with some specificity so that they kind of know what you're looking for, right? Right. But they have all these secret names for all their 
lists and documents and databases and stuff behind the scenes. So if you don't know what the magic right, name within know their what you department need to be asking is, for, you can they decline your request. And it's like, but but <laughs> come on right well, we, like the data exists like you they're not expected to pull the data in the format you want but i'm like if you know the data is there just then, give it to them in a well, searchable database why is there this disconnect where like i i and i do kind of think sometimes it is on both sides but okay so if i go and i put in a records request and says i need all the emails between mayor joyce craig and anybody pertaining to a public survey that she put out about crime in Manchester. And I get it, we get it back and there are none. None. There's none. Oh. Apparently there's no emails about this. So all these staff no, people, no, no, nobody no, no, talked no, no, to each no. other. You know what they're doing now? They have data retention policies right. that say we only keep things for 30 days or whatever. And so when right to no requests come in, I'm pretty sure but, that they're telling right. their techs to delete this so, stuff so that they can and, say it and, doesn't and exist. And like, okay, so if you if I put in a request that's confusing, like, okay, here's an idea. Just call me and say, what exactly are, are you, you looking, looking for? for? And I can say, well, actually, I'm looking to see if person A talked to person B about this subject matter. Okay, thank you. And then they can go narrow and the search. honestly, I feel like it's like, like most of the people <laughs> I deal with in the state know who I am by this stage, right? So I feel like my right to know requests and stuff, sometimes I just shoot an email to someone because right. I have a question and they officially treat it like a right to know request and yeah. everything. Like that's, that has actually right. surprised me over time. But I'm like, that's actually great because I seem to get my requests yeah. fulfilled. You're I don't do answer. them all the, the time, answer. of course. Yeah. Um, the last thing I did want to mention just for folks is there is a constitutional amendment that's being proposed on um, parental rights. Yeah. So um, I guess, you know, it's hard not to believe that it's we're not in, a, in, in, in an actual insane asylum. And here's my, here's, my, here's my evidence for that. The front of today's union leader has the yeah. following headlines, right? It says both, I hope I'm going to find this in time, dispute rages over bill limiting sports by biological sex. So that's all the transgenderism and all of that. And then uh, this heading crazy, says that. the diaper spa draws neighbor's ire, right? The, the so diaper this, spa. So the diaper spa is where people who have a child fetish um, go to do whatever Pretend they're, they're doing, right? Or so so twofold i'm just like that is so weird is like, like like all of that is just so weird that we've gotten to the stage where parents are literally saying hey state we have to let you know you are not the guardian of our children because, because our neighbor is a diaper spa like, you know and honestly that i, I who you know, cares what the diaper each, spa people are each doing, to but, their own the but, only reason we know is because it's licensed right, right. so now it's you know so Actually, it, it could be like if it was just next door and people were coming and going and you had no idea, you probably wouldn't care. Maybe someone's having their nails done, right? So it is because of also government interference that these are becoming issues. But you know what? I'm going to take a look at the wording for that parental it, constitutional I, I, I amendment. I haven't read all the words either, but um, it sounds like it basically just said, if it's the one I'm thinking, that parents have the right to decide things on behalf of their children for their education I, their lives yes, and their, I didn't their know we had medical. to spell that out that that was the parents uh, well, well this is the problem we, 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 we live in a world where people think unless you wrote a law then it's illegal right. so somehow it's now illegal for parents to be parents or something so whatever I don't know if it's the right solution but at least let's get it in writing that parents are in charge of their children and they're not owned by the state we're getting the wrap-up signal so we're gonna wrap up um Happy February 1st for all of you tomorrow, and we will be ne back next week with, I'm sure, something wonderful to talk about. Um, stay warm. Bye, guys.